Hello, everybody. You've tuned into the Indiana State Police Roadshow brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance, a subsidiary, Indiana State Police Cops for Kids, also a sponsor of the Indiana State Police Roadshow. With me today is Eric Strevel, Sergeant Eric Strevel. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I appreciate you coming in here. Eric has a uh, longtime friend. We worked together at uh, the Putnamville District for many years ago, and uh, we appreciate him coming in here and talking a little bit about our uh, air section for the Indiana State Police. I also want to uh, thank Tom Strevel for putting us on YouTube each and every week. So thank you, Tom. Wave. Tom's waving in the background for uh, being here and uh, putting us on the on the YouTube. So, Eric, a little bit of background. What year did you uh, become an Indiana State Trooper? Uh, December 21st, 1996. And why did Eric Strevel decide to become an Indiana State Trooper? Uh, the long and the short of it, because yeah. I was a law enforcement agency that had aircraft. Okay. All right. So were you law enforcement before? I was. I worked for Indiana University while I attended Indiana University. I worked for the University Police Department. Was that here or was it down Indianapolis. Home? Indianapolis. Okay. From 1993 okay. till 1996. Oh, so you were there for a little while. Actually. Actually. So were you a pilot before you did become a yes, pilot? I'm a pilot that became a policeman. All right. I was a, uh, my first, uh, right out of high school, I went to Vincennes University. Yeah. Attended their two-year program. Got all my uh, fixed wing ratings. Okay. And then uh, as I decided to go forward with my education, I found myself, uh, I did not want to get a professional degree in aviation beyond the, the associates. So I settled on a bachelor's degree in history at IU, so. And while attending there, a friend from the airport was a university policeman who got me started in law enforcement. And so it kind of made. Yes, it kind of all merged together. Well, good. So you were uh, you were a pilot, decided to become air, uh, in the air section. What made you want to be a pilot? What what brought that interest on? Uh, a little kid growing up in central Indiana. I'm from Franklin mm -hmm. and I lived south of town in the uh, growing up in the uh, Franklin Vietnam Flight. and immediately thereafter, uh, a lot of air traffic as there is to this day, inbound and outbound from Atterbury. Oh, yeah. Playing in the sandbox, looking up, watching the Hueys and the F-4s and everything else that would come in back then. Yeah. I just have always had an eye for it. So so you uh, put yourself through the schooling? Yes. Okay. Where did you do that at? Uh, the aviation schooling? Vincennes yeah. University. So is that is that... Uh, is that tough i mean for somebody that's never in uh, you know encountered that uh, there's a lot of pilots around the world but that's got to be some grueling uh, uh, training well it, i as to anyone that does something that they really want to do it's yeah. it's not as much work as it is enjoyable because it's what you want to do i mean it, it, there's challenges like as with anything but uh they were they're surmountable because you're interested you're motivated and you're paying to be there so and that's a pretty good uh, flying school, and I mean they're pretty well known. I would for that. I would say so. Yes, they yeah. are. I mean, they're they. We were the only associate degree program at that point in time. It was actually conducted back then, in uh, across the river from Vincennes in Lawrenceville, Illinois. Right. Yeah. Uh, however, they subsequent to that, it has all moved up to the Indianapolis area. Okay. Uh, so they do it in the Indianapolis area now. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of our people there uh, went on to either Indiana State's four year program or produce for your program and that's if they wanted to get a degree in an aviation a bachelor's degree in an aviation field like management right pro pilot uh i don't remember what they were because i chose a different course <laughs> yeah so you decided you're a pilot you, you get into law enforcement um where did you start out at when you when you graduated from the academy uh, i started oh, oh i started out on the department at uh i went to versailles district okay first southeast indiana is that where you did you stay there for a while? or how I was in Versailles from 1996 till 1999, March of 1999, when I came to Putnamville. Okay. And we met. Yeah, yeah. And so is that uh, when you decided, hey, I'm going to try and get, because you got to put in your time. You can't put in for specialty teams, you know, right away. Anybody listen to this program, you got to put in your time as a, as a road troop and do your thing. And then later on, if you want to be a pilot, a scuba, ERT, bomb squad, or whatever, you can apply for that. So how did that work out for you? Well, as the as our department offers a lot of specialties that one might go into right uh as you ask any of the guys when they come in some of them kind of fell into it after they got on the department i knew when i came on that was the uh, the uh, ring i was reaching for so i've always watched the aviation section some guys want to be in going to investigations and whatnot i literally just i you have to wait till a position opens right 
Yeah. And then the, once the position would open, they would review all of your qualifications ab above and beyond the traditional uh, promotional process within the department that you're familiar with. And they kind of lump all that together and made a decision. But the first thing I had to do was wait for an opening, someone to, re in, in fact, someone to retire. Right. Yeah. So, um, had you continued your training also while you were doing this? Had you continued to fly and you, put in your hours and things? Yeah, I worked, uh, well, I mean, as a policeman, you know, kind of wearing two hats. And then yeah. I flew as a contractor. I flight instructed a little bit. Okay. Worked for a uh, auto parts company in Columbus for many years flying their uh, corporate airplanes. Oh, wow. While I was working the road as a troop. Okay. Uh, and, of course, during that point in time as well, I uh, went into the uh, helicopter side of it. While oh, I was really? doing that and working the road at Putnamville, I got all my uh, helicopter ratings. Now, is this something that you thought, hey, this is going to help me out to get on the department later on, or is this something you thought, this is really what I want to do. I want to be a helicopter pilot. I, you, nothing's for sure when you're trying to get, like I said, moving forward with the department. It is a competitive process. It's just one of those things in life I knew as a fixed-wing pilot, watching the helicopters go by, and as a kid watching helicopters and airplanes. I always knew I wanted to do that, too. And, I, I mean, it was sort of a jump. To, uh, I don't want to make the stretch and say I knew it would get me in, but uh, I knew I wanted to do it anyway. So even if I had never gotten into the Department of Aviation section, it was still a goal and a challenge in life that I wanted to do was to become raided in helicopters as well. And at that time, we had um, quite a few of them. Correct. Around the state so that you could... Uh, probably... The opportunity was there. Yeah, yeah. So fill me on helicopter versus plane. Is that like uh, apples and oranges? Uh yeah, that's probably a good comparison. They're both fruit. Yeah. Uh, they both have a lot of similarities, but uh, there are glaring differences. Yeah. I mean, the basics of uh, some of the, um, the basics, I mean, aspects of the regulations, navigation, the, uh, air, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, meteorological aspects of it right. are all the same for airplanes and helicopters. I mean, everybody flies in the same environment, the airspace, whatnot, the uh, actual aerodynamics of it are similar to a point, but they do split as far as an airplane has a, a fixed rigid wing and a helicopter uh, through a power source rotates its own wing and makes its own lift that way. But uh, And the uh, aerodynamics are a little different and the uh, actual physical aspects of controlling it, they're going to part ways. An airplane is uh, more... Uh, <clears throat> It requires ballistic motion, whereas the helicopter can be up and moving because uh, it creates its own <laughs> movement. Well, answer me this part. You're, and you're a great shot also. You're a great firearms guy, good shot. And a lot of times uh, firearms people say, we'd like to have a person come in, teach them how to shoot that ha knows nothing about guns because we start from the ground up and they're a lot easier to teach. Is it easier to learn someone to fly a helicopter that knows nothing about planes? Or is that background useful for you? Uh if the background information, the the background as stated, the, the some of the fundamental stuff was already there. All I had to pretty much do when I made the transition, and they call them add-on ratings, because you're adding it to a license you already have. That right. They they based upon category, class, and type, which I won't go into all that. But uh, it's an additional rating to right. like a commercial license or an airline transport pilot's license. You add helicopter to it. Uh, the uh, so I had a leg up there, but in as, as far as physically learning how to control the aircraft yeah and uh i might argue having gone through both ends of it it's probably easier to start with one discipline and then trying to pick the second one up it's probably because you're re i have to unlearn some habits right and then uh, reinforce some other ones that may not be cross applicable which right. as stated with the aerodynamics and how you physically control it uh but of course that would probably be based on the individual too i'm sure for somebody like me when i got into helicopters i uh it probably took me an extra percentage of time to make it stick, yeah. make myself, you know, re-ingrain those habits. Now it's second nature. I can get right out of any airplane and get into a helicopter and go. I've done it on the department now for many years. Sometimes literally you just land and go from one to the other. Uh, but I can see where with some people, they may have had to encounter the same challenges I did, but other people probably take to it a lot more. Yeah naturally well again you're listening to the indiana state police road show brought to you by the indiana state police police alliance and cops for kids i'm speaking with eric strevel he's a sergeant on the uh, indiana state police air section and we're talking about our, our planes and our, our helicopters that we have on the department and <laughs> how eric got uh, involved and and what exactly his job is what exactly do we use our aircraft for eric uh, how, how do they utilize around the state 
it's probably easier to say what we don't use them for because really if you can think of a reason or a need for it and it's not uh, uh, outside of our capability or against uh, federal regulation right. or something we are statute, you know, we're, we're, kept, we're not allowed to do or trained to do, we'll do it. Transported. In the last year, for an example, I've photographed crime scenes from both an aircra- airplane and a helicopter, uh, transported individuals for various reasons around the state, state business and uh, law enforcement in airplanes and helicopters, uh, criminal searches, uh, uh, weather surveys like flooding or right. take a look. Uh, anytime you get a tornado event, uh, we're from time to time contacted by uh, state and federal agencies to overfly uh, tornado routes and things of that nature. Uh, one of the more recent things we did that was out of the ordinary was during the uh, back in, well, it was coming up on a year ago now, back first of uh, this year, they had the issue down in uh, Du Bois County right. with the uh, uh, avion flu, I believe it was. Right. And we were tasked... Uh, for about six days a week, for about eight weeks. It was a pretty long run there. Flying, meeting up with the estate veterinary okay. people with the samples they collected and oh, yeah. expediting them to Purdue. Oh, yeah. So we would pick them up in a small airplane, a uh, Cessna aircraft, and uh, fly them to uh, Purdue. Purdue every day, every morning. And there's a place to land up there. They have yeah, they have a very large, nice airport. Yeah. In Purdue. <laughs> yeah. Lafayette. Well, that's great. That I didn't even know we did that. It's just, I mean, stuff like that. I mean, yeah. in the past, I've I re, I've heard the guys that have gone before me talk about blood runs and right. organ runs. I've never done anything uh, like that, but it's easier to say what we don't do, which I can tell you, we do not do medical transports. Right. That would be getting more into the expertise of like a a, a IU's program or PHI. You've probably some of the people see the uh, yeah. yellow or the green helicopters right. in their areas. We do not do anything like that. We have a, I mean, obviously in a in an event of a, a mass casualty or a, a, a catastrophic event, if someone needed transported, we would put them in our helicopter and do that. But yeah. uh, we have yet to ever see a scene that were that bad. Well, we're down at about two minutes and 30 seconds, but we want to jump on this, too. It's, it's something new and exciting that just happened. We just had a, a – I'm calling it a total refurb. Is that the correct language on our on our copter? Uh, it went through a, a, a substantial uh, – I would say, you know, total, not total, but substantial uh, upgrade process. It went in, you know, ab- above and beyond the cosmetics of it, paint, interior. It was due for an upgrade in those areas, uh, the avionics – on them and that's the best part about aircraft for the most part they're modular modular they're not like a car most things come in and out of them the avionics package for the navigation the pilot instrumentation was completely upgraded and uh brought into in line with uh, what's available on a new aircraft now uh for you know basically flat screens touch screens things of that nature wow and our uh, sensor package our thermal imager the uh I mean, the uh, infrared camera is what people probably think of it as. It's a, a thermal imager, thermal camera, and our uh, mapping system to get us to and over a point anywhere in Indiana uh, has been brought up to a, a top of uh, um, what's currently available, the wow. top of the line. It's a, it's a great system. You give me a, either a lat and long or a house or an intersection anywhere in Indiana, the TFO, which is tactical flight officer, the person who's not flying, right. who also runs that camera, give them that. They type it in. It points a line to it no matter where you're going in the state or anywhere in the country, actually, but I would say for state purposes. When we fly to that, the sensor package we have, which is the thermal imager and the uh, spotlight, automatically, when you get to that area and start to orbit it, will train on that spot. Amazing. And uh, will not come off of it. The the thermal imager and the spotlight are slaved, so they're both looking at the same thing, uh, which helps the units on the ground. There are as we now have capacity to illuminate things uh, infrared for and police operations uh, to where they can uh, be seen uh, and illuminated from the air with the IR for like SWAT units on the ground with uh, night vision goggles, things of that nature. Wow! Uh, like I said I could go thing. into a, a long list of what it can do. It's a it's a great improvement over what we had, and even what we had was not that old. Yeah. But as we all know, looking at your kids. As you're holding up, uh, you know, a phone or iPads or things, the technology advances uh, rapidly. In, in five years, you're a old hat. In 15 years, it's outdated. So we've we've taken a great jump. Man. Well, Eric, thanks for being in here. We appreciate you talking with us today. Okay. You're welcome.
you've listened to the Indiana State Roadshow, Indiana State Police Roadshow, we'll catch you next week. Roadshow out.